So good morning everybody and welcome to today's masterclass as part of Cellissimo. I hope you, anybody who was watching the Beethoven Sonata marathon program last night has recovered as one of the principal protagonists. I'm not sure that I have yet, but I will during the day. But I'm delighted to be here to introduce our masterclass with the wonderful Swedish cellist Jakob Koranyi, who has performed a beautiful Bach Plus recital as part of our festival already and will be back in Ireland in physical presence in the future to perform for us again. And Jakob, thank you for being here with us. And um, we also have Alice Kelly, Music for Galway's fabulous intern, who's going to be looking after the, the masterclass this morning and making sure they run smoothly and that everybody gets their, their 40 minutes. So without further ado, I think I'll hand over to Alice and to Jakob. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, really nice to be here. And uh, I'm really glad that that you guys are pushing through with this this initiative. Um, that's yeah. That's great. That's really Thanks great. So much, Jacob. Um, we'll bring on our first student, I think. So, Adrian, if you want to unmute yourself and turn on your video, we'll get started. Hello. Good morning. Ah, uh -huh. good morning, Adrian. Nice to meet you. And you too. Oh, you have a real hall. Yeah, we are at the uh, Music Academy of Limerick in Ireland, so. Perfect. The Music Academy of Limerick. What a fantastic yeah. name. Great. Um, so what are you playing today? Uh, Dvorak for a moment, if that's okay. Perfect. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. 
Okay, great, great. Uh, let's. Uh, we don't have so much time, so I. Yeah, of sorry for interrupting you. No, no, no. Um, no. Great. I, I want, first of all, can, could you turn your camera a little bit downward so I see your bridge yeah. area a little bit more? Yeah, that's probably better. Yeah. Exactly. That would be great. And please tell me if you can't see me properly or, or something. Yeah, yeah, I can. Um, so, I think I would love to investigate two things. Uh, one, one is a little bit, I, I, I have the feeling uh, that, and, and correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but that you could sometimes use a little bit more finger strength in the left hand. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're, you're thinking about? Or, because sometimes in articulation, for instance, I, I see in a place like, uh, like this, uh, this kind of thing, uh, or when trilling, these kind of things, it feels like you're, you're struggling to keep the, the sort of articulation clear in the left hand. Yep. Um, and I wonder, what's your tactics? today what what's your do you have any studies or exercises that helps you with this well, or how do you practice this kind of thing yeah well well i was wasn't actually dedicating much time to that like it's quite yeah uh, i think yeah, that could be useful you know there there are so many good exercises for left hand strength and agility kind of things uh, I mean, you know, basic ones that I think all of us have heard somebody do. You know, it's, it's something that, at least for me, I heard every master class I went to, I heard everyone when I was a student, every, all the students were doing this kind of thing. And actually, I, I never really did it, but, but I always wondered, what is it, what are they doing? Because, I don't know, in Sweden we didn't do it, but... In the on the continent people were doing it um yeah. and i mean there are so many more of course uh, there's a great book um by of course i forget his name now that's really embarrassing a swedish professor in london um i really should should find his name oh that's so embarrassing um i know him <laughs> i really should know his name <laughs> uh Lidström, Mats Lidström. Oh, Lidström. He has a wonderful warming up book uh, with really informative sort of texts of also what to think of when you're doing these things. And I use his book more for the right arm because that's where I'm, uh, some, some things that I want to work with. But I think if, if you have things that you want to work with with your left hand and this articulation, there are many things there that, that could be very useful. I, I would just recommend you to look in that direction because I see that as, as sort of a, a thing that's maybe a little bit behind the other things that you're 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 doing when you're playing if I may be so straightforward mm -hmm. um, and I mean for trills how do you yeah, practice trills <laughs> how do you practice trills well well it's either like uh, I did slowly or like I exchange with like uh, and and uh, yeah, stuff like that. So like. Yeah, and and uh, so exactly. I mean, those are the basic exercises that I also use. And and of course, then you continue. And uh, right, Th these are the kind of things. Yeah. And and also, do you put the metronome on something and you subdivide? No, I should. I, I think that's also a good thing. I mean, if you start at sixty or something and you do. And then you know this kind of thing um, and then you do you do it until you know you reach your limit of if it's six tuplets or eight uh, in, in a beat and then you go to 62 and you do the same kind of thing, you know just to to um, exercise that kind of thing because uh, i mean for me at least trills are really i always struggle with trills and it's it's something that that if i don't every time i have to play a piece with a trill i have to practice 
drills. It's, it's just an annoying fact of life for me. Um, oh, I hope that I'm not the one freezing here because I think your picture froze. Yes. Hello. Let's see. Is the administrator? Well. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, is it me or is it Adrian that's freezing? I think it is Adrian. Um, All right. Adrian, is there something wrong with your connection? You seem to be freezing quite a lot. Well, my seems to be fine. Okay, but you're you both okay Jacob now. Most we can carry on, and if I it happens again, we can see what we can do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, did you did you hear the last thing I was saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was great. A bit, bit inter interruptions, but I got the point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Um, great. Uh, so that's one thing that I, I would just yeah recommend and, do, and and you know when you practice that thing, be super picky with uh, how you lift the finger, right? I mean, basically, there's no use to do this exercise if you're not pushing your articulation to be better than normal when you do the exercise. That's what you want to train, right? So really be... Especially when you lift, that the lift is super active, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you put the weight from one finger to the other. So that is, you're practicing the articulation, not just playing the notes. I think that's um, quite key. Um, okay. The other thing was uh, a little bit about sound and, and I couldn't see your contact point when you were playing, but I had a feeling that you were kind of not so close to the bridge, maybe. And I would love to have you push, push yourself it. closer to the bridge. I mean, if you just take the first note, what can you do with that without it getting fortissimo aggressive, but still forte, but... Can you just do the first note a couple of times and find a good contact point uh, for it? Mm -hmm. I hope you can see me well. I'll just, just see it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> now I don't see your eyes. Yes, perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Okay. Hey, great. Can you find a shape to that first note? Uh, that is... Or actually, I mean... Uh, so I think the contact point was, was not... Well, it sounded good, it sounded great now. Uh, so then let's uh, talk about what, what's your vision for these first notes? What's your... Um, what are you aiming for? Uh, do you have a picture, a character? Um, something like that, like that in mind? Uh, yes, well, kind of heroic, uh, monumental, and quite. Uh, mm. Yeah, that's kind of. <laughs> uh, one thing that I find really inspiring with this theme, at least for me, I mean, of course, any any. Um, you know, in a way, everything that's written in the score is just it serves as inspiration for us to find something that we believe in, right? And it, it really, there is no right or wrong, I, I, I think. Um, I like the idea of a fanfare, you know, like of a trumpet, ba, 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 mm -hmm. you know, uh, sort of announcing, um, yeah, the return of the hero, or I don't know <laughs> what you, but, but something really um, like that. And in that sense, maybe then quite, Rhythmical. I mean, if I, if I would do a fanfare, ba, 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 I would be very articulated in the bam, ba, ba, bam, right? The, the first note ends with an M. It's not la, 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 right? And very often we play this beginning very much, you know, like completely like tenuto legato kind of. And I wonder if you could find a bit of articulation if I'm... I'm slowing down the rhythm, rhythm now, but that there's some ba ba ba, right? Great. 
Can you have it on both? Now it was great, but then, you know, so that we have really the ba ba bam like a trumpet rather than a stringed instrument. I think that comes, that character comes from the, the articulation that we manage at the tip of the bow. Great, great. Okay, and then continue. Bam, ba bam, ba bam. Great. I'm going to be really annoying and ask you the classic question. So, how? What's your plan for for making a difference between the fourth and the fortissimo here? Well, simply growing big or like using the chords to, to get to the higher level of dynamic and then stay there. <laughs> mm. And I think below or behind that question lies, lies the question of what does it mean that it goes from forte to fortissimo? What does it inspire you to imagine? Okay, forte, then you look in a, in a bag of expressions that's sort of possible with the forte or, or inspired by a forte instruction, but fortissimo, maybe you look in a slightly different bag, right? And, and what do you find in this bag? What's different from... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's a bit more agitated in a way, like there's much mm. more... Uh, I would say it's like reutterance of the previous idea, like, but going stepwise and like uh, one dynamic uh, degree higher as well it's kind of uh, it's it's a bit more like a bit more passionate and kind of mm. changed yeah exactly agree and so except for a dynamic race which is you know obviously when you go from forte to fortissimo yeah a little bit louder but like you say more intense so what can you do what what feeds what kind of tools do you have to make your sound and your playing more intense? Well, well, in in terms of the tone, I'm I'm already on the, on the limit, so like maybe enhancing vibrato or. Sure. In what way? Oh, make it well. Both broader and uh, more faster, basically. Mm. And there are many more tools. I mean, your articulation is definitely something that that can mm -hmm. make you more wild or more controlled or more, you know, all these things. Uh, your uh, your timing is definitely something that that can affect these kind of things. If you first you had this measured bam ba ba bam, right? then if you want to be more insisting, maybe there is something with the timing that you can do that is not so controlled, you know? Um, and especially when you come to, I would say that this chord, right, that's where, it, that's where we're aiming, right? Uh, and how, how can you make that chord not just, but that's where it's the most, um, condensed or, or uh, compressed somehow. Uh, there, there are so many things that you can play with except for how loud you play or how fast your vibrato is, you know? So I, I would love for you to, to, uh, to think in a way more theoretically about it, but coming from an emotional or, or a dramatic um, place within yourself you know what's what happens when when i'm agitated you know what's and how can that translate into what i want to do here if i'm getting more agitated here with the fortissimo <laughs> there is such a delay <laughs> like after i say something i see you doing this 10 seconds yeah. later yeah I'm, I'm sorry about that but let's yeah. let's try um and also, you said in the beginning that you're already at your limit here. 
maybe you can find a sound that is not at your limit. So, like, and then compared to that you have actually one more level up in intensity. Maybe when you play fortissimo, you don't need that much bow. Maybe actually forte is more generous with the bow and the fortissimo is more condensed because you're closer to the bridge. I, I couldn't see anything, but what I really liked was I heard the difference between how you approach the first note, which was kind of open, and the second one, the attack, was really something else. The attack, the articulation of the, first, the E compared to the B, uh, B natural, uh, was really more dramatic. And that's just one of all the little details that you can fine tune to get that. Um, uh, sort of, yeah, to, to, to really infuse the piece with, with the characters that you imagine. Um, okay, and then we have, we come out uh, somehow quickly on the other side, right? G major and then, right? And here you have to somehow, even though you're still really up there, relax the sound from... Uh, oh, I can't play with this thing on my head, but... Um, you know. So, make sure that you're not staying in... like this kind of uh, tense thing, but now... Uh, sort of let the bow be more um, free again. Can you try one slowly from from there? Great. Okay. So great. So uh, again, the image is going like this. Can you see me well? Uh, uh, most of the time, I have some delays. And then like, uh, okay, okay. I think it's mostly on your side, Adrian. Sorry to interrupt. Is there any way that you could um, connect to a better network just because it is freezing quite a lot? I mean, yeah. I Maybe think it's frozen right now. Yeah, sorry about this. We'll get it sorted. It'll be okay. Yeah, no, this. It's, if you could maybe hotspot your phone or something, yes, Adrian, that would be uh, great. Well, this is the. Well. Uh, Unfortunately, not because this is uh, the university uh, Wi-Fi, uh, and Isaac has set it all up, so I'm kind of dependent on him. Okay, uh, <laughs> no problem. Well, th this is the, the only option we have. Okay, okay. that's we'll fine. That's fine. Sorry, thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I hope this, this gets through. Um, I I couldn't see it, but I could hear it, uh, which was that you're you're trying to get back to the frog after every uh, with every up bow so you're doing right i think you could do it just as well if you keep moving a little bit downstream so to say so do you see what i'm doing with a bow distribution I don't go back to the frog because you don't need to, and it disturbs your sound or your phrasing. Yeah, try that one slowly. Yeah. Ah, I can't, I can't hear it really. I wonder if it would be worth it if it's not too complicated to try. To move to a different spot in the room maybe there is better wi-fi connection or something in in a different spot of the room in a different uh, corner 
Or even if you could get Isaac, um, just to give you a hand, maybe use your phone and use the data and hotspot your laptop or something like that. Sorry, Adrian, it just no, no, would make no, a big I'll, difference. I'll, I'll, try, I'll try in a second if you don't mind. Just of course. Me. Perfect. Thanks. A moment, For those who are here, I can um, tell you, if you haven't already found it, there's actually the manuscript of the Dvorak Concerto is on IMSLP these days. It used to be that you had to travel to Zagreb or something to see it, but, you know, uh, 2021, you can just download it. Uh, and it's quite, quite amazing. Um, so many little clues and, and uh, uh, inspirational notes there. Um, for instance, there's this thing that I, I always wondered about. Uh, you know, when you get out of this section uh, where we have the this thing to uh, um, I always wondered where where does where is this coming from? This theme it it seems like it comes a little bit out of nowhere uh, and then it disappears a few bars later is so shortly lived um, and if you look at the manuscript you have the original accompaniment figure for this section um, which is something like that I never played it in concert I know I think Misha Maisky does it and maybe I'm sure others um, but there is this alternative, like the, the first version of that accompaniment figure that we're playing there goes something like that. And that's what we're playing in. So it comes out of this accompaniment figure that used to be. And that's what's being used as a theme. I, I discovered this just a few years ago and I was like, ah, finally this makes sense. Um, and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to one day to, to try playing this uh, original accompaniment to see. Because I always think that, that also, especially the transition between it's, it doesn't really, it's not the greatest it, it, it requires a lot from us as cellists to make that make sense somehow. Um, so, uh, yeah, a little bit of... Um, maybe that was news to more people than me, I hope so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you're back. I can hear you. Yeah, I hope, yeah, I hope it's better now. It's much better. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And from my side as well. Wonderful. Yes, Thank great. <laughs> um, so, where were we? Uh, yep. Yes, exactly. Great. Can you can you try? Do it really slowly and use the same amount of bow on the upbeat per 16 note on the up bow as on the down bow. So just don't change the bow speed. Just do it really slowly and boringly once. Yeah, you know, if you if you would look in the mirror, you would see that there are still many different bow speeds in your right arm, mm. and I'm sure there is on mine in mine as well. But I, I think less in mine than in yours, and I think that's what's affecting the sound to be a little bit, um, uh, yeah, a, a little bit uneven for this. You know, we would like it to be something like this. Uh, that's my aim, anyway. And speaking of which, uh, what's your aim for the phrasing in this section? Like, I feel it goes towards the C, like. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a very common thing. I, I, I stopped doing that for reasons of my own, but it's it's usually what what uh, people do. Uh, no matter how you want to phrase it. Um, make sure that it's it's clear so because it's easy that we hear instead just the different bow speeds how that affects the phrase somehow so um 
So if you want to do... Be very clear with that. Um, great... Mm. Let's see, how much time do we have? We have another five minutes, right? I think ten more minutes left. Ten yeah. more minutes. Sorry. Yes, exactly. Exactly. We started half past. Um, let's see. Let's do something with with the second theme, right? If you could play it just once more. connect a little bit to what we spoke about in the in the beginning with the different dynamics inspiring you to look for different characters I mean there are so many instructions here actually uh, and it's it's really inspiring also to look in the in the score I, I really encourage you if you haven't done it in the in the facsimile that's on IMS and P's. it's really interesting but a, a good score would have the same things uh, written uh, more or less but what do you have written here actually Oh, but like a pianissimo dolce molto sostenuto in the very beginning. Ah, okay. And then I have a few like crescendi and diminuendi, but otherwise that, that, mm -hmm. then that only yeah. in the end, like when it gets to animato, it, uh, it goes to forte. Do you have anything else written? Uh, no, I have this uh, supposedly uh, text edition uh, by Breitkopf. Yeah, I think so you're, you're missing one thing, but I, I don't blame you. I think you also have in tempo, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, in the, in the very beginning, yeah. Yes. Uh, and do you have a measurement um, sort of for the tempo? Uh, like a... Yeah, it says 100. Right. Did you try? Mm, well, yes, actually, I, I feel it's a bit too fast for me <laughs> for some reason. Exactly. Everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody plays it that fast. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure somebody does, but it's the, the common way to hear it is sort of um, mezzo forte to forte, yeah. much, much slower than 100. And, um, and in that sense, not at all in tempo. It becomes sort of the side theme becomes a different tempo. I mean, uh, I think we have in the beginning, right? I'm just double checking so I'm not saying something completely off here. But yeah, we have 110. That's the, uh, 116. That's the tempo of the movement, right? So um, 100 is, is not so far from it. And I think there is a point to this. And even if you don't play, you know, the metronomic mark of 116 for the bam, ba ba bam, this kind of thing. Uh, I would like there to be a, a, a relationship between these themes. Also, when you get then later to to here, also in tempo, right? Um, and that one is in mezzo forte, right? This one is in yep. pianissimo. Always, it's the opposite when people yeah. play. <laughs> I, I say always. Of course, it's not always, but usually, it's yeah, the opposite. The common, really. And I wonder if you can find if you can find the courage to be inspired what's by what's written and not by what other cellists did uh, to think what what is it about a in tempo mezzo forte you know what what's different from from in tempo pianissimo dolce e molto cantabile and and uh, yeah really find a version that is based on that not on what you usually hear i, I find that very inspiring anyway um, 
let's let's try the beginning and let's see wh- how how uh, not the beginning the, the this uh, second theme and what would be your if if you're thinking now that okay so the tempo is, should be quite fluid i'm not saying rigid or anything but but not slow right um and uh, if you're looking for a character that is quite fluid really pianissimo what is pia- what can pianissimo dolce e molto cantabile how how could you describe that with with sort well, of quite warm in sound and uh, uh, yeah i'd say warm and uh, kind of uh, mild like like lacking any kind of mm. this heroism from the beginning like mm. in complete contrast to it. yeah 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 exactly and uh, and to me a pianissimo is usually at least in this case it, it indicates to me that it's something really intimate it's something personal it's internal it's it's the private sphere you're not speaking to the crowd you're you're it's between you and yourself or you and one person that is really close to you uh which means that everything you do you know all the movements there uh it's not that you have to be careful but it's it's like you can't make any sudden big uh, uh you know uh, crescendos or moves like if if you would do uh <laughs> You know, if you would really go to make a big crescendo diminendo there, you would get out of this uh, intimate situation that you're trying to create, I think. And I, I wonder if that's, at least for me, it would be inspiring to keep this whole theme as a private matter. Maybe, you know, if you want to connect to what what is known about the composer, you know, his... his it, um, relationship to his home country or to his uh, i don't know what the women in his life daughter mother wife you know it was all tragic kind of um yeah, no. so so uh you can find inspiration in any of those it doesn't have to be true it's just something that that um, um can give you something and in a way if you keep that beginning the pianissimo dolce cantabile really intimate then when you get to you know when the orchestra starts warming up with the tremolos and you know it starts you know you start to smell the 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 spring air there rather than what usually is done because if we play the beginning of this theme in mezzo forte and kind of uh, nice sound then when we get here we want the to have a contrast but it's actually written the opposite way i think which is can be inspiring at least uh, you know i don't know the truth but uh, but uh, there, i don't think there is one but but i find it inspiring to look for inspiration in in the things that are written in this original score um yeah um any last question you have one minute <laughs> oh well uh... <laughs> about, about the, the next section like after like when you, when you come to the like uh, character wise uh, mm. would, would you have any ideas about it <laughs> yeah i find that one of the most as i said one of the most confusing places for me as well um i mean you ha- there you have the the instruction of the leggero right uh and the portamento and the uh mezzo forte cantabile so it's yeah i mean it comes after this beautiful orchestra solo even though it's uncomfortably written i think this kind of Yeah, I, I would go for something uh, where, you know, you, you don't see the storm that is coming. It's, it's this yeah. carefreeness just before the, the drama that is going to hit you in the mm-hmm. face. <laughs> if that's, <laughs> I don't yeah, know, yeah. but uh, yeah. Yeah, 
I see. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, yeah. Great. So, I, I think we're we're uh, quasi out of time. I don't know if it's my job to to end the lessons or if somebody is telling me. But but uh... yeah, I think we're done for today. That was yeah. great. Thank you. So Adrian, um, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You very thank you very much, Adrian. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And good luck. Perfect. So Zoe, if you'd like to join us now for your lesson. Hi. Good morning, Zoe. Morning. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. good. Did you did you warm up properly? Or I, yeah, you... I am. I am. <laughs> Very good. I know if if I uh, if I were you guys, I I would probably. Yeah, I I need my warm up. I would yeah, not sit here and listen for the at least not the fifteen minutes before I. Absolutely, no. I got I I I work. <laughs> Very good. What are you playing today? I didn't look at the. Um, I was wondering if we could work on a bit of the third movement of Brahms E minor sonata. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. I third movement. Let me check. It's a bit new, so I love any thoughts you have. Uh, did you say it was a new piece for you? Or um, yeah, the it's, uh, this this movement specifically is quite fresh. So. Great. <laughs> uh, let me just find it yeah. there. Uh, did you have any chance to play it with piano or something similar? <laughs> Not yet, unfortunately. Um, I ho uh, soon, I'm sure, but just um, because of kind of lockdown rules. Of uh, course, I have to make a little bit of commercial for a friend of mine who who really created this very timely and really amazing app. Oh, really? And, yeah, because it's actually weirdly good. It's called <laughs> he's he's a fantastic concert pianist that I played played a lot with before the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, called Juho Pohjonen. He lives in in Finland but plays all around, mm -hmm. and <laughs> he's not only a brilliant pianist, he's also a brilliant uh, programmer. So for oh, seven nice. eight years he he's been manually creating this app for iPad or iPhone oh, uh, nice. called My Pianist, and he released it about a year ago. Actually, my, my teacher told me about it. Yeah. Teacher. And it's, it's really disturbingly good sometimes. <laughs> so, of course, it's still it's still a machine. It's still an AI. But, but it's really, you know, it plays with you. <laughs> and if you have no access to a pianist or a yeah. piano, yeah. then why not check it out? I'm, I'm just checking now if he has... Yeah, the, the E minor is there, the okay. Brahms. So you could try that in lack of other, and you know, um, let's see, but enough of that. So do you want to, yeah, uh, I'll probably stop you because yeah, yeah. of time constraints.
Thank you. Great, great. Many good things here. Um, I wonder... Maybe, maybe I start by, by one general uh, little observation, um, which is that, at, you know, it's, it's, of course, everything is a matter of taste, but I I try myself <laughs> in a way to not sound like I'm playing the cello. Uh, in this sense, uh, I'll try to explain myself. Um, that that I I don't want to hear uh, slides or or um, bow distribution or shifting problems. You know, I don't want to hear the the technicalities, the the, the problems that we all have and face. With playing the instrument, I don't want to hear them, right? Uh, and and sometimes we get so used to hearing certain uh, issues uh, that that we we don't really we think it's a part of our sound or something. I don't. I, don't, I one one thing like that is is uh, when you when you some some shifts. Um, maybe also again, I'm I'm being a bit harsh, but it feels like you've given up on hiding them sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Uh, there was one, a couple of places where it was more... Um, ah, where was this? It was a couple of octaves, something... Um, anyway, like a place like this. This, this place. Uh, if, if we just take that... What can you do so we don't hear, uh, you know, th these kind of things? How can you do it once more and just uh, try to avoid that those shifts? Much better, and I think you'll find that it's it's a combination of maybe preparing, and, you know, that maybe it's a, something in that particular instance about the elbow. It's different uh, when you have to. Uh, it's a different thing, but it's a combination of sort of the speed at, at which you can move and the agility of the left hand, but also the timing of the right hand. Um, so don't forget that you can really help your left hand with your right hand yeah. in these instances. There was another place that I just wanted to find in this context. Um, was it 
I think it was. You know, I was. I kept hearing the shift yeah, to that. Yeah. Um, can you just do that once more? Uh, from maybe. So that's what I mean, that it's not actually that hard. <laughs> it's just a, 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 something that you got used to hearing, um, at least in, in my mind. Maybe then if you say, no, I really like the sound of that, what I'm doing, then do it for all, by all means. Uh, but it's just, it just sounded a little bit like a habit mm. to me. Mm. And, and there are, you know, uh, like, 20 more little places. These were a couple of obvious places, right? But there are a couple, like many more little places where you can just, uh, you know, uh, yeah. clean it up a little <laughs> in the left hand. Because you're doing so many really great things and it sounds really good and it's, I, I really like the, the, um, the how do you say, the, the approach for this movement and there's a lot of good energy in it. So I, yeah, I, I think it would be really great if you if you look through that. So, um, what do you think about the articulation of the triplets in this movement? What what's your do you have one idea or do you have like because what I <laughs> the reason I ask is because I think you haven't yet specified in where you want to use what kind of articulation in the triplets. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what are your your thoughts so far? So um, I, 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 I think I probably um, should articulate the opening more, those triplets. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, you, so on the low strings, it's quite useful to have a little bit more uh, bounce on them mm -hmm. to make them speak, right? Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we start with that? Let, let's go from the beginning and, and just show me the, show me the articulation. place from the beginning I can't remember the finger uh, if you're in the right place from the beginning of the bow you don't need they become a bit uneven but I wonder if it's because you're trying to do something there I wonder if it's not just you know if that would be more effective rhythmically A lot of the articulation is better. What you really need to do is put a metronome on yeah. <laughs> quite slowly yeah. because this is a nightmare to play with piano and the pianist has to do the same. It's all about the triplets against the, sec the, the uh, eight notes, right? And because when you're playing triplets, the piano is playing eight notes and vice versa. And if you're not both agreeing on uh, the translation between those two, it's always a mess. So, so really, uh, if you have a pianist, if you have a pianist in mind whom you will play it with when possible, just say that uh, a really boring guy in Sweden said you have to practice with a metronome. <laughs> blame, <laughs> blame me, um, and because it it will really help you uh, in, uh, get started on this. Um, and I say also slowly because then you have a chance to get all the details in, all the phrasings that you want to do, uh, and also the articulations and the you know, uh, uh, bow distribution details and all these things to just fit them in to a really 
into that kind of tempo and um, and then slowly move upwards. I, I think that for this kind of movement, it's quite useful. Um, which one is more? This one or this one in your mind? I mean, I don't think I, I think you could do both uh, ways, or I neither, or I, I don't know. There are so many options always, but just it's good to have one in mind when you play. <laughs> uh, and then compared to those two, then there's a da ba da ba da 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 da. Is that one more or less or? Yeah, I would say less. Uh -huh. Okay, great. So you have a little bit of a hierarchy of those notes. What about... Make a hierarchy of all those sort of um, points of interest and that will make your phrase somehow. Um, okay. So we figured some things out here. Let's continue. Um, yeah, let's go. Boom. Yara pa 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 pa. Okay. Great. Uh, so. This is why, why, uh, so what about these triplets? Articulation wise. Maybe they could be a little longer than, than the first ones, but mm -hmm. still, still articulated and defined. And, um... I think I agree with you very much. Um, I think it would be nice if they were not as short as the which we, we kind of need that uh, shortness for the string to have time to react uh, on the low string as well. Uh, but we, so a little bit longer because we don't want to, it would sound short, like spiccato on the D string, especially on the A string. So we want it to sound similar, which means a little bit longer, but still articulated. And right now I think you lost articulation in favor for, for length. Um, or that's that was the risk, and I think it has to do with where you are on the bow, sort of bow distribution uh, issue. Uh, you s just a tiny detail. You started with a second finger yeah. the first time. Mm -hmm. Why? I have. I. It was just automatic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fine. I. I would say, because you go down there, right? I would say this is yeah. less... It, it, what happened was that I heard a bit of... I heard a bit of that stretch. It's, it's, a, it's a strained position, you know, it can be done well, but it's unnecessary there to, <laughs> to put yourself and the audience through that. So, uh, why don't you use the third? Uh, let's go from there again. It's one thing also later when you, you're at the tip, but if you want a similar sound, I think it's important not to lose that you're using the arm and it's not something like that. No matter which string it is and how short it is, you're still sort of with the arm. The, the, I th at least for me, that makes it, gives it a similarity across the strings. And then you can adjust the length, of course. Um, so let's 
when you do this. Do just that once and keep the articulation when you go, come to the E string. Aha, you do it up bow. Okay. Try down bow once, just to, to have that sort of ya pa 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 bam insisting quality. You're actually on the string now, so you're playing. Can you? Huh? Slower, slower, and give me equal notes on the up bow and the down bow. Mm -hmm. I think the difference here, I think this these kind of things are tricky to to hear over Zoom and you know listen. But I think what what's the difference is that you're trying more of a martellato kind of thing. So you're trying this, and I'm doing more of a spiccato, but it's not a spic like. I'm basically very close. I'm closer to the frog, and I I do less with the fingers in a way. So, that kind of do slowly and really close to the frog. Now you're doing more like I can hear ka 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 ka, right? Uh, which means that you have to be more active with the fingers. What I'm doing is actually just a U-shaped thing. So I'm not gripping the string at all. I mean, this is really going into the weeds of, of this articulation, but I find it kind of in a movement like this, like a fugue movement, where the rhythmical aspect is really part of the core motif. Uh, I'm just telling you what kind of articulation I'm looking for. Yeah. No matter what you land on, if it's ka 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 or uh, at the tip or five different ones throughout the movements, I don't know. But I, I, I would say that it, there is a, for me, there is a quality in them being defined for you so that you use them as a as a tool of it, it becomes for me then a uh, um, driving force somehow uh, in, in something insisting about it and and that goes also for how you do this if it's or if it's uh, you know i don't it doesn't matter but that it has force each note somehow um okay great uh, let's go from uh... <laughs> Notice a couple of places where your left hand was uh, yeah. showing us that what instrument you were playing. Yeah. Great. As long as you notice, you'll figure it out. I'm sure. Um, 
I would say same thing here in a way that like make a quick retake so they, that it's really rhythmical whatever you do I'm sure it can be done somehow like that whatever you do just rit sort of forcefully rhythmical um, and then you know, it's the inverted thing, right? And on the A string again, it's quite much easier to go away. To keep somehow a similarity of the martellato on the um, tip. I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I, I find, to me now, the, the little gap that becomes from a re that comes from the retake is not disturbing me as much as the difference in articulation that I get when I but maybe that's due to my limitations I'm just sharing my my um, uh, personal uh, findings uh, and then yeah I, I would like more that you really acknowledge the, the weirdness so to say the <laughs> That is, you know, the, the and it's it's a you know a intensification of that. Uh, right, it's sort of leading us there. So that the, those offbeat accents, I find really um, inspiring. Let's do that once more. Um, yeah, maybe just from the uh, open C. There. It's a, you don't need you don't need to do do the, all the things that I I know it's a lot of information. Um, just so you know, you'll find out I'm sure when you turn the metronome on. But your tendency is that the triplets lean forward, right? Very virtuosic, but forward. <laughs> um, okay, so B. Da, da, da. Okay, so now to something in a way completely different and at the same time extremely related. Uh, why don't you go to from? <laughs> and lead us into to this sort of um, parallel world. <laughs> until 10 to 12 right I think yes uh, so um, it's yeah I, I'll just mention it uh, I, I find it useful to have the same kind of articulation here so even if it's in piano so for me it's still this u-shaped thing just from, but it's just <laughs> yeah that they're they're related somehow i i like that um i wonder about your vibrato sometimes for instance when you go that note you see i don't do it with the fourth finger because it sounds like not so good, uh, but uh, you do it with forefinger. Can you make it? S I mean, it's an intense moment, but there is.
can you make it so that it doesn't sound there's something about the intensity that makes the vibrato narrow mm -hmm. and i think that's not helping <laughs> the the sound so uh, maybe <laughs> I do it with third, it just doesn't sound good. You know, I wouldn't say... I mean, when I, when I was studying, I was still trying to make my fourth vibrato as good as my third. I still haven't... I'm nowhere close, and these days I just go with... It's got to sound good, right? It's, it's not important that it's the fourth or the third, actually. But when you're studying, of course, you want to, you know, develop things. We, we always have this ambiguity, you know, the practice room self and the concert self. Um, but have the third finger, because it already sounds much, much better with the third finger. Have it as a role model <laughs> for your fourth. Uh, so you don't, if you're going to play it in concert, don't accept that your fourth finger doesn't sound like your third or change to the third just before the concert. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, what can you do there? <laughs> to make it, uh, I don't know what you, uh, did, did you swap both? <laughs> or, uh, Okay. Um, can you do from uh, there and accumulate energy and then by that A, you're sort of turning yeah. that energy upside down when you come out of the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can make it sound uh sound cons uh, consistent yeah, yeah. uh with other bowings. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Uh I haven't played this sonata in a, at least a couple of years. So I don't know what I would do today. Yeah. Um but yeah. I actually do it uh, now. I do something like that. And then yeah. Was that what you were doing? I originally was doing down down down. <laughs> Ah, I see. The thing is, I for, for this piano, I need to be sort of here on the bow to have that same articulation as... Uh, which means that I don't mind coming to... Then I end up just where I want to be. So that's probably why I would do something like that. Um, we have four more minutes. Do you have any question or something that you were thinking about or... Um, um, I'm wondering just maybe, do you know this part? Um, yes. Um, I kind of feel sometimes like the, like like um 
the 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 kind of higher register kind of comes out of nowhere, and I'm not exactly sure. Um, I uh, show me, yeah. <laughs> So you do that. I think one thing is bow distribution there. Uh, if you would do so that you don't try to get back to the same place, right? If you do it slow motion, like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think that will help your sound in that way, because the, the bow distribution is... And that's another sort of facet of just what we were talking about, not wanting to hear the issues of playing this. I mean, one thing is this, but also that we're always in the wrong place somehow with the bow is also another problem. Um, I wanted to mention one thing I remember. When you play... Um, uh, I just wanted to, in the vein of this, that very often we hear it's a repeated figure and we hear because we do a repeated fingering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we get a repeated kind of um, expression that I think is unintentional and then it, it sounds like... I, I actually like yeah it's not as weird as it looks okay. <laughs> try it <laughs> I'll say this last uh, bit of uh, very often it's much easier to stretch three four than uh, I mean if you have to do something like this I find it much easier especially depending on vibratos and stuff but to stretch like that than to stretch like like this which we usually learn that the first finger is the one that stretches back we don't learn that the fourth finger can stretch especially here when you have vibrato it's actually quite comfortable to release that. So just um, as a tip of the day, uh, it might be useful. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to squeeze in things uh, before the, the time is over. I hope you can uh, have something from it. Uh, great meeting you and uh, good luck with your studies. Thank you, thank you. That's great, thanks so much, Chloe. So now Isaac, if you want to turn on your video. Hello. Good morning, Isaac. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. I'm just going to put my angle down here a little bit yeah. so you can see the bridge. In I it. recognize the room, but the, the quality is, is definitely like the end of the first lesson rather than the beginning. Yes. How did you fix yeah, it? Yeah, we have... Oh, uh, hotspot. Unfortunately, there's some ah. tower around here that just doesn't work. Ah. Leave it to University of Limerick, I guess. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, we're all in the same boat on this. You never know. Uh, it's true. There is a reason why I'm not in the University of Stockholm right now. <laughs> because <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, so, um, what are you playing today? I'd love to tackle the third moment of the five pieces in folk style, the Schumann. Mm, great. Let me find that. There we are. Third movement. Hmm. Did you play the other movements? Did you play all the movements? I have done all all, uh, yeah. all five. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to play uh, three, four, and five with piano as of yet. But since I have a keyboard at home, I've been doing my best to try to yeah realize it as best as possible. I, I'll say it again. Uh, if I did it, yeah. Uh, so this app that I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you were here for that, but uh, it has Filmstrick in Folkstone as well, I just checked. It's interesting. 
if you if you want some inspiration from playing with piano without meeting a pianist, that app has that yes. piece. If you oh, right. Tried it. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, it, it might be interesting. I find it actually interesting myself. Um, so, third movement. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I learned this piece quite recently. I think it was two, two or three years ago. I didn't play it before that. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> it's something when you learn a piece when you're older, uh, you approach it often from a little bit different angle than I remember approaching pieces as a student. Uh, and I, I wonder, did you figure out in the first moment what the Vanitas Vanitatum title Oh, yes, from? actually. That's, um, that's a poem by Goethe. Um, right. Did you the, read it? Uh, I mean, I did, I did. Yeah. It's so, it lends a darker tone to the, um, the first moment than I think we often give it credit for. It's very much... Um, What's the best way to put it? I wouldn't call it lackadaisical, as some people tend to play it as. But maybe something a little bit more with angst and yeah, calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I find it was, you know, I heard this piece many, many times, of course. And this yeah. first moment, I was always a little bit... Uh, I, I, I didn't understand it, really. And, you know... It, I was worried when I had to play it in a concert. I thought, what, what shall I do with this? And then I read this poem and I thought, ah, that's, that's what I needed. Uh, yeah. This kind of combination of, I mean, he's, he's taking a very serious theme, right? Of, of uh, yeah. the vanity of death or something like this. I don't know how to express it, but this co common trope of, of that time, uh, yeah. how everything is, you know, uh, decaying or van vanishing. And, and he makes that, you know, the, the poem by Goethe is actually quite humorous, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really, you know, it's full of this hurrah and aha and, you know, these uh, um, uh, expressions. It's, it's meant to be funny on a dark theme. And that's exactly what this movement somehow is. Yeah, it has that. Mit humor, right? Uh, and I never understood where does this humor or, you know, come from? Or, yeah, what, what is this? Um, and yeah, I, I just thought that that, that um, poem was so important for me. So I wanted to mention that in case. No, of course. I mean, it's, it's so much worth bringing up because it's, I'd be curious about how it translates into the rest of the, the piece as well, just because. That I don't the know. One movement that has that. Yeah, thing. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I wonder if they're connected like that. Do you think so? Oh, gosh. I think. It kind of drifts back and forth between two stages of life, youth and death. Um, the second movement being youth. The third movement has kind of, a, it, again, it has that Floristan Eusebius conflict, mm -hmm. much more apparent. Um, but it still, still has that kind of sarcasm and brooding. Um, well, not sarcasm, but I would say just more uh, forlorn. Mm -hmm. um, and then br uh, just this kind of moments of elation. And then, of course, you have the fourth moment, which is really boisterous and full of, um, you know, real energy. And then you have the, the last moment, which I think is, it's a mix of uh, anger through gritted teeth, I think would be the best way to put it. <laughs> You're good with words. That's great. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's hear it. Uh, I'm actually looking at... That's another thing that's funny. I, I haven't uh, studied it properly yet, but there is, the, again, the manuscript, the facsimile uh, on IMSP. Uh, yeah, I this, can't believe this that. Piece. It's, it's fantastic that we can get these things now. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to studying that more and seeing also what the connection between the movements might be. To be honest, myself, I haven't really connected them much. Yeah, but that's that's really great. Um, I will definitely uh, do that, um, or look for some some meaning between them. Uh, but yes, the third one. Um, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Oh, it's such beautiful music. Beautiful playing as well. Um, great. So I, I already forgot. What what was it you said you were thinking of for this third movement? What was what was your description of it? <laughs> it's the um, uh, feeling between the Floristan and Eusebius. Uh, one being not one being more um, forlorn, I would say maybe almost in a in the state of mourning, but not to the point of anger. Um, and then you have these moments of remembrance. So seventeen, for instance, is this mm -hmm. wonderful moment of youth. And then you have the second part of the trio here, which is this piano dolce, mm -hmm. which again is this. It's like a moment of like heavenly elation. It's so the texture so. Um, light mm. and it's mm. i i think you know with this out of this movement i think or not this movement but the entire piece is mm -hmm. that this is probably one of the most amazing mm. parts because the way that he writes everything it's so it almost is not well a, it's not cellistic he never wrote cellistically he wrote more for himself <laughs> definitely not um but he it really conveys something that is so ethereal because the harmonics especially we don't normally use stuff like this on a regular basis especially mm. in this kind of music Hmm. True. Um, I I get the feeling as I said, the piece is relatively new to me. And I get the feeling that sometimes you've thought about this more than I have. Uh, so I'll just share my you know my thoughts. For instance, I wanted to ask you, you said harmonics here. What yeah. makes you believe that they, are har they should be played as harmonics? Maybe you have a good uh, source for this. Yeah, it, I wouldn't say so much the source as I think oftentimes when you hear stuff like this, because even the, um, the, set, the first part of the trio in this actually... Um, Kind of demonstrates this is that if there's two again this is in my experience because i I'm, i don't yeah. have a, a myriad of experiences but i think with this is that if there's too much going on in the left hand it kind of punctures the the skin of the texture a little bit it's kind of it's very uniform in the sense that it should be more like one instrument versus two i think in, in the beginning you mean in the... Oh, no, no, with the... Ah, okay. Those, yeah. Yeah, cool. I mean, it's an absolutely valid idea. I, I thought of it quite differently because of the dolce. But yeah. uh, I think dolce can be with or without vibrato. It doesn't have to be connected to that, of course. Yeah. Um, interesting. I, I would suggest... When you come here, uh, this thing. Yeah. Again, it's a little bit of what we spoke about in the Brahms. I don't know if you had the opportunity to hear any of it uh, or if you were warming up as I would have been doing. But uh, I think the more, <laughs> the more you can make it sound like you were describing it as, as something, you know, uh, uplifted and heavenly and, and sort of uh, you, and less as a something tied down to the factualities of the cello <laughs> i think the better and it's a horribly written place right but yeah. i think you're choosing some fingerings that that's not helping you uh, in mm -hmm. some ways um and i think you could also potentially vary the fingering so that it doesn't sound like we have this certain expression over and over again just because we have that shift or something yeah so so one thing would be to i'm sure you explored it but to think about that that possibility and then practices but it's you know it's a more practical fingering yeah uh, i'm not you know i i if you can make your fingering sound as relatively in, uncomplicated as that fingering 
even better, I think. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, like, um, uh, I think um, this repeated... Uh, that's dangerous, I, I would say. Going both up and down uh, with those long things. Yeah. So, I'm sure... I'm sure you've seen these options before. I, I would encourage you to maybe mix them in with your what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, I just came to think of, do you know this? Um, actually, did you see by any chance? I have <laughs> I've barely seen it myself. But the, the Bach plus one uh, thing that I recorded for, for this uh, festival. Yes, concert. absolutely. That's fantastic. So the last piece, thank you. The last piece, yes. uh, did you recognize that? No, actually, I couldn't. I wanted to ask you so, about that. So it's, you know, Smetana's Moldau from Mavlast, my, my country, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the melody. That's the exact same oh melody. Oh my gosh. Right? Right, yeah. But also um, Song of the Birds by Casals. Uh, oh, right. You know this melody, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's almost exactly the same it comes from the same uh, roots and and hatikva the the israeli national course, yeah. song and um what else do we have there there is an icelandic version i heard and somebody told me there is an irish version now that i wouldn't know <laughs> uh, and that it has to do with drinking <laughs> but but i i haven't i i've never i i don't know of it so i i would love to uh, investigate this more but it's basically it's it pops up all around the world and it's they all start with and then or, you know it, the different continuations but they all start with you know, and also this uh, melody yeah. somehow. So I found, and the sentiment is kind of, yeah, I, I, I like that connection that it, it might be something from, from those uh, veins. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's be a little bit more cellistic. Why don't you play the beginning again? Mm -hmm. uh, and we just work a little bit with that. Uh, sorry. Great. So, just a question. Uh, the little pa pa pum that happens in the piano. Yeah. Do you see yourself replying to that in or? Uh, reacting to that or that's something separate that's happening or how, how do you fit that how do you see that role you're singing this melody and then somebody says bum, bum, bum. what does that mean and why is it there and how do you react to it yeah thinking about it more it may be better uh, i would want to vary them obviously since this is a very repetitive mm. um section but maybe the first time maybe uh, if it has something a little bit more subdued maybe I don't know if, if right. you have any thoughts on that yeah. well I I think there are so many ways of when you play this with a pianist you'll agree mm -hmm. on what is what does what does it contain yeah. Uh, and and you can you know have ten different versions and improvise on it you know of course but but uh, I think somehow what you do uh, with uh, ba -ba -ba, this one mm -hmm. you have to decide how it relates to the ba -ba -ba. is it a ba -ba -ba. shut up. <laughs> or, or is it <laughs> I agree or you know um, yeah as a source for inspiration to see mm -hmm. how those connect or if they if you don't care if you couldn't care less if that's something that's just happening <laughs> you know could also yeah. be um, I think it was good what you were doing now uh, compared to when you played through because now you had more of a line to the second one and I think it 
it, it benefits from that um, variation. You know that. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, as you say, it's it's repetitive. Find your your ways of of um, uh, doing that. Then I I would let this be one voice. Uh, the and then that it's not the same. But it's actually, a, yeah. you know, a new voice or a new initiative somehow, however you want to look at it. Can you try that? Uh, beautiful. Can you sing that once? If, if you don't mind, could you sure, sing that yeah, once no, for no, me? Yeah, yeah. Just that. Just some bar. Oh, yeah, the pick up, yeah. yeah. Fantastic! You got a beautiful voice. Uh, what a luxury! I wish I had. Uh, but but that's really good because you you really actually do a lot of great things with your voice that you could transfer straight to your instrument. Yeah. Uh, listen, sing it once more. Listen to how you connect the C and the B. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen. Wonderful. So what you did, what I hear, this right there is a tension between those two and it sort of goes to the B. Uh, mm -hmm. You say B, natural, right? And yeah, B natural. Not yeah. H, yeah, okay. Um yeah, how, how, how you sang that was so great, especially the second time when you came from the music. Uh, if you could transfer that phrase into what you're doing and, uh, you know, let's not talk about what it needs, but see if you can keep it in your ear and just uh, plug it into your playing. Once more. Yes. better uh, mm -hmm. I wonder if we could also get the shape of the B yeah uh, as beautiful as you did because you had a sort of a tension relax within that note mm -hmm. that was super musical to me but I I think yeah I let's see if you can really find that on the instrument. yeah yeah Now you're really searching for it. I, I think there is still more details to find. And when you yeah. listen to your own singing, mm -hmm. listen for the, all the little tiny quasi glissandis and what vowels and what consonants are you using? Yeah. Uh, like obviously you don't sing ki 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 ki, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. And you know, but sometimes we play that because cello <laughs> and. <Yeah. laughs> uh, we, yeah, I mean, you don't, uh, obviously, uh, but but there are things that, that um, like, for instance, which fingers we use or oh, yeah. uh, we, which fingerings and, and sort of what kind of vibrato we find on different fingers might be, I mean, in my case, I, I just can't do most things with my fourth finger vibrato wise. I, I tried <laughs> my whole life, uh, but, but uh, so I rather go for a finger that, that can get closer to what I I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and and don't be afraid of of, of um, or afraid, but 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 remember that nothing is forbidden when looking for a fingering. I mean, one of my uh, favorite examples. We did something here uh, in Browns. We did, uh... and you know, it's it's actually really comfortable for most people. Not for everyone, but for most people. Uh, and but it's 
you know what I mean? There should be a, a shift there. Mo yeah. Uh, we the way we learn to play the instrument. Same thing if you play... Um, <laughs> can you show me a fingering of the beginning of the... Uh, this, where you don't shift. Hmm. Let me see if I can find and you have a good sound vibrato and everything on every note. Exactly. Something yeah. like that. And there are variations of that depending on which fingers you're comfortable with and so on. But mm -hmm. there doesn't need to be a shift. But 99% of the time we get a shift. <laughs> uh, which is not from our musical preferences, but from... And I think that can really apply here as well. You know, where do you want the shift? Do you want to... Depending on how you sing it, or and you can vary yeah. this uh, yeah. in a million ways with different fingerings that cater for your musical ideas. So, so fingerings, I think, is really an underestimated uh, tool of expression uh, many times. Um, I have a little detail here. You know, we have the crescendo, uh, mm -hmm. the second time air. <sighs> But I actually wrote in from the piano part there. The, there's a pianissimo there. Maybe you noticed. Yeah, uh, I was wondering about that too. Bum, bum, bum. It's yeah. it's really subtle. And last time I played with a pianist, and uh, and we were you know. So how should I react to that? And I decided that well, actually, at least once I should, you know, I I could go back. It could be a subito pianissimo rather. So. Uh, yeah. It's a possibility. Uh, it's not in the cello part, but it's also not not in the cello part, so to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, please play the theme again without a repeat. Uh, I just want to hear it one more. things I liked it there was also somehow a calmness to it that I think it, it it's it's good to have there um, can you sing for me uh, just the first two bars oh for the for this piece yeah yes First two bars one more time, please. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Can you do that once more? Yeah. I want I want you to define for yourself by singing what it yeah. is you're looking for here. Mm. Once more, please. <laughs> Great. So, how can you? What What do you hear? I'm I'm particularly interested in the those notes. Yeah. S sing them again and really think about what are you doing there. What would yeah. you like to do there? Great. So 
great, great, great. Okay. So, because what I hear uh, when you play, you're doing a fingering that is absolutely valid and, and good, but it's quite... And I think you're doing... Yeah. Right? Uh, and so it's one, three, harmonic, or quasi-harmonic. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I think you're more, but it's also a matter of focus. I think you could use that fingering potentially, but but I lack a musical intention on those mm -hmm. three notes that I, I hear you looking for and trying different things when you sing. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you play, you're, I hear your fingering somehow. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I think for every singing um, bit that we play, it's, I'm super anxious putting in a harmonic in such a place. If, uh, you know, because it, it, stick, it easily sticks out. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's quite possible too, if you want to avoid it. Um, so, try once more and really listen for what you're doing there. This. As an experiment here, because it comes yeah. so many times. What happens if you really listen for the connection between... Uh, just once, as an yeah. option. What if, yeah, sorry, yeah. No, 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 please, please. Uh, okay, that's that's one option. What if you listen for the connection between the... Between those? Just how, what can it bring? I, Not the way I played it, but what can you do with that connection? It's, so the color. Yeah, it's a, it's it brings out different parts of the theme. You know the or uh, you know it's very different. Or, or uh, you know there are all these options. Or uh, so way, the way we choose our fingering. It will either work with us or against us somehow, <laughs> depending on, you know, what we're looking for. So yeah. I think in this kind of movement, in this kind of music, it's super, super important. And actually in most music. Um, um, I wonder, let's see, when did we start? 10-2, right? So we have five more minutes, right? Yeah. Um, Oh, I wanted to just mention, you know that you're adding time. You, when you play it through, you did it twice in the very similar oh, way. Oh, is it the F natural, the... Nah, the... it's a... The dotted eighth note is too long. Ah, right. Uh, so just make sure, I mean, fine if you want to take time, but it sounded like you were not sure about the rhythmical nature of that. Bum bum yeah. bum oh, bum, no. bum, yeah. bum 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 Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> well, it's a small. 
that's the easy fix. Uh, but um, great. And uh, do you want to try some of of this? Yeah, maybe. We Did you get that? I, yeah. Let me just say. It. Yeah, the sec uh, like I, I mix it up a bit, so I do and then I go and then second time I do the shift, but you know. Yeah yeah, I just yeah. I play here it's too short anyway to have a fantastic vibrato on the top eight notes yeah uh, so I, I kind of leave it to sound okay mm. uh, and then I go for four two here because I don't want to move my first finger to the D string yeah. something like that it's an option I mean it's not that it's easy. <laughs> I keep fucking it up myself all the time when I play it, but uh, it's on a first principle basis, it's, it should technically be possible to do that with less slides and more legato. Uh, of course, yeah. and, and somehow I think the sound is acceptable. So I, I choose more of those kind of options. I do one big jump there, but you know, no reason yeah. no fun. Um, and then I, I can just say, I do... And then something I and then maybe you know I switched up a bit uh, yeah. between the the piano piano dolce and the pianissimo. Um, I wondered about that. Yeah, to I mean, again, it's one of those things I, I always have to remind myself that we as artists are allowed to make those decisions. Absolutely, we're. You know, we're presenting a composer's ideas, but it's our interpretation of those ideas, not the Absolutely. I, I really, the, the older I get, the more convinced I am that my view of that is that the, the music is really, <laughs> it's, an, it's a, a base for inspiration. Like, yeah. try playing this note after that note for this long with that. See what happens. Do you like it? Uh, you know, like, what does it bring to you? Everything yeah. is suggestions, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like when you have a recipe, if you're a really good chef or cook, yeah. it's absolutely fine to spice it up a little if you want that. You know, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's like, it's just, a, yeah, it's something to inspire us because it has to mean something. Right? It doesn't matter if we do everything that it says, if it doesn't mean anything to us. So we have to find, it's, it's an inspiration to find meaning. That's, that's what I, I try to remember. And, and like we were talking about earlier with the pianissimo or, you know, the Dvorak, like if it says pianissimo, it's, it should work as an inspiration for you to find a, a kind of character or image or whatever you're looking for, feeling dramatic. Uh, it can be so many things, but, but, um, it doesn't mean that you have to play, you know, it doesn't only mean that it's it's a certain amount of decibels, obviously. Yeah. Um, but often I have to remind myself about that. So I, I remind my, when I teach as well. Uh, I think it's 12.30. Um, so I, I'm afraid we have to uh, keep going. But uh, really Not nice to meet you and uh, bravo. And good luck with Thank your you. continued studies. Really, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. My pleasure. Great. Thank you so much, Isaac. Uh, Robert, if you'd like to join us for your lesson now. Hello. 
Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. How are you keeping? Fine. I'm I'm uh, excited to see a, a a real live pianist there. <laughs> it's it's been a long time since i actually played with one <laughs> uh, great to have you here and uh what are you going to play uh i'm going to play the second movement of dorsa second movement of dorsa concerto great take it away i might interrupt you because of yeah, well, well, the well, short yeah. lesson time yeah Sorry to interrupt, Robert. I'm really sorry. Do you have your external mic by any chance? Sorry, it's just a bit tinny. Oh, I do. For sorry. If it's the same for you. Yeah, I was actually just going to ask uh, do you have the original sound thing on? Yeah, if you have that external mic, that'd be great. It sounds a lot better. Did, did you turn on this uh, original sound option in Zoom? Yes, great, thank you.
Okay, great. Thank you. Bravo. Um, I suppose there is not much you can do about the, the internet connection where you are right now. It's a bit uh, coming and going, but... Um, Robert, do you think there's any way you could use a mobile hotspot? Do you think that might be better? I was going to say the same thing. Oh, okay. And is that better than the Wi-Fi, do you think? Or do you not have Wi-Fi yeah. at the moment? Okay. Okay. We'll work. Thank you. We'll work with this for sure. Um, in a way, I'd like to start by, <laughs> by uh, dissecting this first thing. Uh, melody a little bit. Um, I mean, it's it's just full of, of uh, <laughs> in a way, it's very, it's almost minimalistic, right? It's, it's just these and these and these. <laughs> it's coming back to, to the D, right? So... Uh, and then... And then... Uh, so how, I mean, I think there are, as always, so many ways to do this uh, that can be really convincing. Uh, but I wonder what what is when you played, and it might be the Zoom connection and uh, the struggles <laughs> that has to do with that. But I couldn't really tell what is it your what's your plan what's your which note is the most gentle and which note is the most sincere and which you know how 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 are you moving through this team a theme uh, have you can you explain to me your plan uh almost it's a little bit yeah that's probably better <laughs> Right, okay, so this one, the, you said the first one, this one, uh, that one, and then more gentle, Some, something like that. Great, okay, and then? So yeah, great. So I mean, it's it's a variation on, and then when it's it's kind of the same thing, right? Um, so I think if you do the same, as far as I understood you, I, I didn't really hear, but forgive me if I misunderstood. But uh, you wanted to go again to the, and then. Or you, you wanted to sort of be more uh, dense in the beginning on the first B and then sort of relax to the last B in the next bar. Yeah, yeah, because I think there has to be... Uh, has to be but I think it's good if you're aware of the fact that the the first and second bar are sort of it's the same it's just a variation on that material in the third and fourth bar but then it continues so so that we don't it doesn't sound you know I could make them sound very You know, if if I do them the same, somehow it doesn't really create a phrase. I think it it it's sort of. Um, I wonder if you can find some sort of variation in your plan there. Maybe you already have it. I. Uh, but please tell me and then show me. Yes, like probably the first bar, 
probably at nearly 70% or a little earlier. Um, to kind of make a longer phrase down to the B. So like uh, Okay, great. So, which meant that basically you're doing a long crescendo from all the way from basically that's what you're. <laughs> if I'm being crude, <laughs> uh, I think. I think that you can find find more detail within you know within that bar compared to how can you and then the crescendo begins here right So that if you if you begin the crescendo a bar earlier, I think you lose the opportunity to to uh, speak with that. I, I, yeah, I'm being very. Um, <laughs> I'm not finding the words right now, uh, but I wonder. Do you do you get what I mean? I I would like you to find more details and to define for yourself uh, more points of interest and points where you could make a variation, so that it's just. In a way, the, when you say that you want to make a crescendo over two bars, that's kind of what I hear. Uh, and, and not in a good way. <laughs> it sounds like you're getting louder for two bars. Uh, but I want you to speak every note in a different way than the parallel note in the part of the phrase before. And, you know, like try to open your ears for the possibilities of speech and variation in this. Can, can we try it once more? I hope I can hear uh, what you're doing. L let's do it once more from the, from the, just maybe a uh, bar or two bars before uh, the entrance of the channel. <laughs> it was actually, that was funny because you ended up doing uh, the kind of bowing that I was doing by mistake, uh, but actually it brought an un, I think an unplanned kind of variation to what you were doing. That was actually quite nice. I don't even think I've tried that bowing before, but there was something about it that brought, it made it less predictable somehow. Uh, and I think you need to, to, to look for, you know, the difference in smell between this note and that note and then and then you know so that they all smell slightly different um and even more so when you have uh, to repeat the note after each other, right? Uh, so that they don't just become two repeated notes in a crescendo or something like that. But they, yeah. Um, but it was really <laughs> uh, a lot more beautiful this time. And let's have it one more time and continue. Thank you.
Okay, great. Great. Thank you, thank you. Uh, great. We spoke in the last lesson a little bit about singing the phrases. I don't know if you had the opportunity to hear it or if you were rehearsing, but... Uh, so tell me if I'm repeating myself for you, but but uh, have have you tried uh, singing this for yourself? Um, maybe like once or twice. But yeah. Yeah. Probably should be doing more singing, but I, I don't do it often enough. <laughs> no, but the thing is, that, like uh, often, and I, I used to think very much like that myself, and and I hated singing in public. The first time a teacher asked me to sing in a master class. Uh, or the first time a teacher asked me to sing was in a master class actually, and uh, and it was you know a room full of people and it was a very well known teacher and I was quite young and I I just said no, <laughs> I'm not gonna sing, uh, but uh, and I you know but it's not about having a good voice or anything or actually singing beautiful. It's more about that our voices have different constraints than we do when we try on our instruments. Um, and it's for me it's a very useful tool when I'm trying to see what is it when I play this that doesn't really what is it that's not working why is it you know not not what I'm looking for and uh, we were speaking before about the the fact that you know you can you can really find new and great fingerings from listening to how you sing where is it you want the connection between notes where and where do you not want them I find myself very often when I sing, I never slide up to a high note. And I, I don't know many singers that do, in, in, except in rare cases. But very often, after you hit a high note, you slide, you have a connection going down. You know? Uh, that's something that, cellistically, we do the opposite all the time. So these kind of things uh, can be quite revealing when you just sing, sing a melody to yourself. Um, and also, you know, where you breathe, what vowels you use, what consonants you use. Uh, I mean, would you mind singing this, this uh, beginning ones? Which one's beginning? Uh, yeah, would you mind singing it once? Just from the very beginning? Yeah. Great. Okay, great. So, so this is a little bit the thing that when we sing it, we have to also really, uh, really uh, aim to fill, fill our singing with. Because, for instance, when you sing, la, 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 you know, you sang it like that, kind of. And that's not how you play it, and I think it's not how you want it to sound either. You know, like, la, 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 la. But somehow, um, You know, you want you want to feel, taste the the spell, the, the the articulation and the legatos and the diction from you know uh, how you take. You know, you don't want it to be la 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 la, and that can be translated into your your um, uh, arms and fingers and instrument. But it also, I I mean. I think when I was your age, I I would sing in a very similar way. It's something that I've trained myself to do in the practice room, to really sing it the way I mean it. And it's I, as I said, I it's not I'm not proud of my intonation or voice or sound of vibrato. I don't have that on my voice, but those I can put hopefully later on when I play it. But what I can do is feel where I want the legatos and the stretch and you know maybe maybe a connection between two notes uh, so I find that a very useful tool I won't uh, I won't um, force you to because somehow it's very personal I find it's something that I was not comfortable doing in front of people for a long 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 time so I'll leave you with that idea and maybe it's a place to to go look um, great 
Uh, also, uh, we did uh, some work on the first movement of the Dvorak in the morning, and uh, I mentioned there is a manuscript, actually, uh, a facsimile on IMSLP. Did you have a look at that? I had a glance at it before. It's actually seen on the past. And, yeah. Uh, I don't even know what you're saying to, uh, to look at like, the original manuscript and stuff. So I had a glance at it, but I have Yeah, it's, it's really fascinating. Uh, there are many things there that I... I you know, as I also said, I think everything is, in the end, is just uh, the the score is uh, is a is a tool of inspiration somehow. The the the, the written text is is to inspire us to to do music. Um, but uh, I I really find it inspiring in that sense to to see the handwritten things that that the composer put in there and also you know performed it once and then put in with a different pen some new things and you know like the the crossed out sections and new versions and it it makes the music somehow to me much less static right and wrong and much more something that grew out of 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 uh, the musicians that were alive at that point and it doesn't stop growing there it's uh, you know it's just that on the paper it that was the version, but it keeps evolving with us, yeah. I think. Um, so one thing that's that's inspirational to me uh, in that sense is the, the little swells uh, when we play... Uh, these things. I don't know what uh, edition you have, because I've seen very, very different versions of that. But the first one I have as well to... Uh, somehow... Uh, and then a, a sort of a diminuendo towards the end of that figure. Do you also have that? Um, yeah, literally, your diminuendo is literally on the dotted crotchet. The, sorry, on the, the on the dotted crotchet. <laughs> oh, you're on the crotchet semiquaver system. I see. Um, I, I'm not so good with that. But yeah, I, I understand. Uh, and then in the next bar, what does it look like? Right, and then the bar after, what does it look like? Uh, just a crescendo up until forte in the next bar. Okay, do you have a sforzando on the G sharp? The sforzando is there on the, um, the crotchet. Right, and then you have uh, the forte on the eight notes in the bar after, and then you have the diminuendo on the long note, right? Yeah. Uh, so, because... Uh, just sort of uh, looking at this, it's it's kind of similar to what I have, but I mean, I think what I take out of it, I don't know if you can, how much you can see here, but um, you see? Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, so the first one, actually, the diminuendo is not in the next bar, but it begins already before the bar. So it's it's not arriving on the G, you know, it's it's just sort of, uh, reaching for, for the top before the G and then sort of relaxing into the G, right? And then uh, then you start the next attempt um, with a quintuplet and there you sort of, you go all the way out, right? You don't have the diminuendo, you, you go to the... and the G sort of stays open, I, I would suggest. It's a way of building that phrase, right? And then you have, just like uh, in your edition, similar thing there. Um, and it's, another, it's, it's uh, the third way of intensifying that uh, figure, right? So with each attempt, the first one is, is kind of unfulfilled. It's just a yeah, taste of it. The second one, more wanting to go somewhere. And the third one, really arriving there. Um, can we try that? It it creates a, a tricky question for the quintuplet. <laughs> uh, this this reading of the score does because very often we want to take a good amount of time there and then relax on the G. But in a way, you could be inspired by the score to read it differently. You know what I mean? You know why why don't you try it? Uh, see what happens.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like the first G. I think it would be interesting to hear you uh, not be so satisfied uh, at the second G, you know? Okay. But the second G wanting more. Uh, and that the third time you're you're doing this, you're not going to G, you're going to G sharp, and then you're going to A, and then to B, and then to C, yeah. So that we really um, building that dramatic arch somehow. Uh, yeah, let's do it one more time and, and move. Especially, I think that I like the direction of the um, pum, he, that you didn't get stuck on the um, A and the B, which is very common, I think. Uh, but I, I think they, if you build it up this way, I, I think they naturally go all the way to the C. I, if I don't remember wrong, now I'm just going to check so I'm not making a fool out of myself. Uh, but the second time this comes... In the score. Could you say that one more time? You yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, that the second time this this place comes, you know, there is a there is the fortissimo and the fermata on the top. Oh, I think I lost you. Ah, are you? Do you hear what? Do you hear me? Again, just because you're you're frozen at the moment. Yeah, I understand. Uh, the second time we have this, in the recapitulation in this movement, uh, you have it in fortissimo, the top C, and with a fermata. Um, so it's a much bigger thing that happens there somehow, right? Um, and then you also have this sort of swell, it's, it's, it's written quite differently. Uh, especially if you look in the score, it's it's quite differently in the in the facsimile, with the where the hairpins are and so on, uh, also building up to it. So I think it's <laughs> inspirational also in that sense that there is not one way to do such a phrase, but but uh, so many ways and these things that they write in that the composer writes in or the editor or. Fournier or whoever, you know, did your part, Heinrich Schiff. Um, yeah, it's, it's inspiration for finding one way, but, you know, in the end, it's, it's, you got to fill every accent with a meaning and a, a really strong sense of, of um, purpose. Um, great. Uh, <laughs> I, I have a question that that uh, I put to myself recently because I had a student play for me the this uh, second theme here and she played it on the A string and it made me think why are we all going on the D string actually because <laughs> it was the first time in my life I heard anybody play it on the A string and I didn't I don't think it was a very conscious thing from her side it was just something sh maybe she didn't really notice that everybody played on the D string. But most of us, we've seen, s before we played ourselves, we've seen 50 cellists play that on the D string. And so we do. Uh, but I found it quite useful because sometimes, you know, you can have, if you put your second finger on the D on the A string, that's usually a very good sound for most of, of us. We can find a satisfying sort of sound there. But if we put our third th finger on the D on the D string, that can be a bit more tricky, especially because it's a harmonic. So it's even harder to vibrate, you know, notes with harmonics on them because we don't get as much of a, uh, amplitude. Uh, so I think at least it would be useful to use the sound 
that you can get on the A string as a role model for the kind of quality that you would like to bring to the D string. Because I think it's still nice with the bit of connection between those you know, we, we arrive on that note, we don't want it to be you know. So I, I think there is a purpose even for a little bit of that shift. And I like the sound on the D string, the, the kind of darkness that it brings. But I wonder if you can train your ear not to accept anything less than the quality that you can get on your second finger on the A string. Um, can you try once, just play maybe without piano, uh, just the first couple of notes, thank you. Uh, do you want me to go to the D string or do you want me to... On the A string, please. So, one, two. One, two. Oh. Yeah, and really arrive, really arrive on the D. Oh, I hate playing with these headphones. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, great. Find that really super, almost over generous, all over, over voluptuous sound. Good. Can you find even more? Almost Trolls Merc ish, yeah? At least. So, so that you hear the wah 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 wah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look for that. Good. So it's it's uh, freezing a little bit on and off. I'm sure it's the same on your side. Uh, let me know if you don't hear me. But look for that ideal sound that you can get on your second finger on the A string. Uh, both the amplitude and especially having an amplitude without speed. Often we we sort of when we want to be intense, we increase speed, but then often the, the amplitude in, uh, decreases, you know? So try to find an open, not slow, but not fast, big vibrato on the second finger. Then do your very best to transplant that to there, which uh, is something I work on every day. But, but uh, uh, it's, I, I'm not saying it's easy, but that's my goal uh, to do. I think that's useful for the sound of this thing. Great, I think we have one more minute. Do you have uh, any question or last wishes? <laughs> uh, just any interest, what thing do you do at the end for the harmonics? Do you, or what bowing do you do? Because I've actually seen some people do like um, separate bows up until like the last six. But I was kind of trying it, but it doesn't really work for me. Like, uh, oh, I think it depends on the tempo that you, that you want to end up in there. Uh, if you keep the tempo, I think the bowings work pretty well. You know, maybe three and three or something like that. I, I would like to keep the, the legato uh, of, of that so that it's really quite simply just moving down. Uh, you know, not separating them or separating them as, at, at least as, as little as possible. Then, of course, I should mention that uh, in order to be less out of tune, you pull the strings a bit, right? Yeah. You, you've experimented with that already. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So you know the, how that works. Um, is that a, a reply to your question? Yeah, no, I'm just curious, just because I've seen some channels do it separately, and I was just curious as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I've done many things in the past, but, but these days I, I try to keep tempo through the trill. I mean, it's up to the, up to the conductor, but, but uh, that in the trill that there is a clear tempo that is... Yeah. 
from the what we have in the beginning, right? So 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 it's quite simple. Um, that's my aim there. Great. Thank you very much, Robert, and thank you very much, uh, pianist with face mask. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a million. Thank you so much, Jacob. Thank we'll you. We'll end the live stream there, but that was fantastic. It was so nice to watch you.